Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update. I hope you're doing well this morning. And so we're going to be taking a look at the latest for these two disturbances. We'll also briefly talk about Nigel here, but I want to bring you guys the latest, especially on this tropical wave off the African coast. And so going on to these satellite imagery here, we can see that we've got Nigel up there. So it is sustained wind, so it is still a cat one out there that is slowly weakening, and it will gradually continue to do so eventually until it dissipates. Uh, sometime next week and then as we take a look at the rest of the region of the southeastern coast there you can see all that activity in association with the disturbance over there and uh, off the african coast there's that blob in association with that tropical wave that new tropical wave maybe bringing some rainfall to sections of the cabo verde islands and uh, let's head into the caribbean so across eastern islands just as i uh, made a video about some days ago in terms of that rainfall increase that is what we're seeing happening right now so it's not just hot and dry there is an increase in moisture which has resulted in rainfall activity for some areas especially in areas such as parts of tobago trinidad uh, northern trinidad there has been some uh, rainfall activity for you guys because there's that little blob developing right there so you can let me know in the comments what's been happening for you of course it gets drier headed to the northern leeward islands and even the virgin islands as well but uh, there is going to be that chance of rainfall as we head through today so across some of these islands there could even be some heavy downpours at times the ABC islands remain in pretty dry unfortunately with no significant rainfall increase in sight and looking over into Central America there is uh, those blobs one of which is dissipating as it lingers off the coast of Nicaragua and then across northern islands there is some moisture in the area as well potentially inducing some brief thunderstorms and even some passing showers now as it relates to the rainfall activity expected through today we're looking at what the euro model has to show and as the map becomes more colorful that is indicative of more rainfall activity so florida parts of uh, western cuba sections of hispaniola puerto rico the virgin islands the lesser antilles going down to parts of northern south america especially for parts of venezuela guyana and uh, parts of northern uh Suriname. there could be some substantial rainfall activity as we head through today and hopefully that's going to be the case because i know just how hot and dry it has been for you guys and even into central america we can see that some areas are likely to experience some uh, pretty decent rainfall as we head through today now as it relates to our disturbances let's go on to them and here we can see that uh, we've got this one highlighted in orange and this one in red now talking about the one in orange first which is off the southeastern coast of the u.s we can see that it is still designated a 40 percent chance of development now as we head into tomorrow it might try to acquire some subtropical characteristics and these systems sometimes they come on very quickly so i wouldn't be surprised if it actually becomes named uh, the next name to be used for the season is Ophelia so it is pretty possible that we could see this become Ophelia and regardless though it is going to be bringing some impacts to portions of the U.S. it's going to southeastern states and even up to the mid-Atlantic those gusty winds heavy rainfall even those rough seas for coastal areas so that is what is anticipated from the system regardless of it becoming a named a subtropical cyclone or not now as we head to this disturbance here 70 percent chance of development this formation chance has also been constant for some time now so we're noticing a shift though because this more uh yesterday morning this time 2 a.m this is what the shaded area looks like suggesting that track up to the west northwest or the northwest as the system nears the caribbean and then this morning take a look at this a continuous westward track expected now and we're bound to see some more adjustments and changes over the coming days because we're not talking about something imminent and models they are definitely trying to figure out what is going to happen with the system here so we're bound to see even more changes with the model runs so there are many possibilities on the table right now i will say that but let's now go ahead and take a look at what the latest runs have to show let's look if there are any trends here so going on to the gfs first this is as we head out to thursday of next week so we're talking about a week out from now and there we have the model showing a system with a pressure of 955 millibars a major hurricane moving through the leeward islands now i'm not saying that there will be a major hurricane moving through i'm showing you guys what the gfs has to show and we're going to look at what other models have to show 
to see if there is some consistency with the latest update here. As we head to later on the day, we can see that the pressure decreases down to 936 millibars, indicative of more strengthening, potentially a Cat 5 hurricane or near Cat 5 strength right here. So yesterday, GFS was showing this Cat 5 system in the northwestern Caribbean. Now it is saying, hey, this is going to be making that turn as soon as it approaches the Caribbean here. So a system making its way through the Leeward Islands, going to the Virgin Islands, and moving just to the north of Puerto Rico, where it further strengthens. We see a pressure that is lower, 933 millibars as we head to next Friday. Very interesting. Going on to Euro now. Let's see what Euro has to show. So Euro is now expecting some more development of the system. It wasn't showing much becoming of it yesterday, but now we see it developing. But take a look at that front. So there is some weakening in the region going on, and it's going to be allowing for that track up to the north. So Euro is expecting that this won't be entering the Caribbean, but will be making that turn up to the north before it gets the chance to do so. And the Icon model is another one expecting something similar. It would seem as though this is heading to the Caribbean, but as we head into Thursday of next week, there we see some strengthening and the system is close by, but not actually impacting the area with any significant impacts. We see a pressure of 987 millibars, potentially a weak hurricane or a strong tropical storm there. The Canadian model though is taking the system on a similar track to that of the GFS, not similar intensity. So uh, we're not seeing a Cat 5 hurricane here, just a weak tropical storm. And this would be good news in that it is, it would induce some more rainfall, but with a tropical storm, we know that there's gonna be that risk of flooding. So that is gonna be a concern. And then eventually as the system makes its way out, we can see that there is some gradual strengthening and it maybe becomes a hurricane potentially by the end of next week. So the new trend this morning is most of these models keeping the system just offshore of the Caribbean or moving in affecting the northeastern Isles. But I would say that the entire eastern basin especially should be keeping watch because we're bound to see changes. We already saw with what NHC is expecting. So that shift in the long term uh, potential track of the system here within this shaded area that is pointed more towards a westward track compared to yesterday where that northwestward motion or that northwestward turn was seen so and uh, there are bound to be more and more shifts as it relates to what models expect because we're talking about something that is not imminent it is well over a week from now and uh, we are definitely to see more and more changes over the coming days but as we head to the early part of next week we should have a good idea of what is ahead and where the system is likely to impact so i will be on top of this for you guys but conditions are looking to be conducive out there to allow for that intensification as it approaches the Caribbean. The sea surface temperatures are off the charts, 30, uh, 30 degrees Celsius in some spots to support that intensification and other conditions uh, out there being conducive such as the upper level winds not being too strong and also there's likely to be a lot of moisture and so I'll continue to keep you guys posted on the latest expected for this and stay tuned for my next updates coming this afternoon. So that is pretty much it for right now and I hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll respond once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be wise.